Okay, so lesson 11 is triads and chords. And some people use the um, terms interchangeably. Actually, a triad only has three tones in it, and a chord actually would have four or more. So I'm going to be using, when, it, when I'm talking about only three tones, I'm going to be talking about triads, so the three tones. Some people say chord for that, so you will understand if you hear someone else say it. Uh, so we're talking about um, mostly uh, triads that are built upon a scale. And we, we are going to go through major triads, minor triads, diminished, and augmented. Those are the ones that are in your lesson. And then we're going to go on to seventh chords, and we're going to talk about those. Uh, I'm just going to point out something here uh, on this slide. You see that this is in the key of B flat major. That's what I've made this with the two flats. That makes it B flat major. If I were to write out a B flat major scale, and I'm going to point out here, this is this is the B flat major scale on the bottom note of the triad. B flat, C, D, E flat. You say, why E flat? Remember, it's over in the key signature. And once it's in the key signature, I do not have to put it in front of that note anymore in the, in the piece of music. Uh, then F, G, a, and then we're back to B flat. If you notice underneath, I've got Roman numerals. And I have either an uppercase Roman numeral, like one, or I have a lowercase Roman numeral, like the two and some of the others. What happens here is if you're good at knowing the scale, and then you just build a triad above that scale. So if you see with, with the first one there, uh, I have the B flat and, whoops, they're B flat and I started on B flat and then I did, that's a space note, so I did space, 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 and thirds up. If I do it that way, it makes a triad in the key. This is called the Roman numeral one. This is the one. If it's a large uppercase Roman numeral, it is a major triad. If it is a lowercase Roman numeral, then it is a minor triad. So you see that uh, as I go through this scale, I've got on built upon the first degree of the B flat scale. I have a major triad. Now later on in some of these other assignments on down, you're going to want to know that that's a Roman numeral one triad, one. Uh, okay, on the second degree of the B flat scale, every time I take a major scale and build a triad on the second degree of it, which in this case is a C, it is a minor triad. You see the Roman numeral two in a lower case, that means minor. So C, E flat and G is a minor triad. When I go to the third degree of the scale, a major scale, I'm building it, in this case in B flat, I'm building it as the root as a D, D, F, A. Three is always, the one built on the third degree of the scale is always a minor triad. So D, F, and A is a minor triad. I go to the fourth degree of this scale, which is an E flat. Look at the key signature, E flat. So when I build the triad E flat, G, B flat, upon the fourth degree of the scale, it is always a major triad. So E flat, G, B flat is major. When I build it upon the fifth degree of the scale, which happens in this case to be F, A, C, it is always a major triad triad when I built it upon build it upon the sixth degree of the scale look at the lowercase six is in lowercase that means it is a minor triad 
when I build it on the seventh degree of a major scale, it's a little bit different than all the others. It is a diminished triad. So every time I build it on the seventh degree of a major scale, it becomes a diminished. So A, C, E flat is a diminished triad, and then that brings me back to one. So you're not really doing this um, in the lesson, but I'm just pointing out that if you're good with uh, knowing the scale for the key and you wrote out the scale for the key, then you could tell what kind of a triad each one of these are. Does that make sense to you? So the triad takes the name of the scale. Uh, it, no, it doesn't take the name of the scale. I'm not sure exactly what you mean there, but it takes um, the triad. I'm just pointing out that if you take a major scale and you write it out, and that's what I'm showing there with the bottom note of each one of these. That bottom note the first degree, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. When you build a triad on that, every time, no matter what major scale it is, the one built on the first degree of the scale is always going to be a major. Upon the second is a minor. Third is a minor. Upon the fourth is a major, major, minor, diminished. Does that make sense to you? I'm just, I'm just telling you this so that you may want to do it this way, especially if you're into like composing or something like that. You can tell what type of a triad that it is by where its position in the scale, I guess is what I'm saying. This may be confusing to you, and if it is, don't worry about it because we're not doing that. I just want to point out that they're always the same if you have a major scale and you're, you're building these triads on each degree of those scales. Okay? Uh, the first assignment, 11.1, .1, asks you to construct major, minor, diminished, and augmented triads above certain notes that are given. And I'm going to show you something about doing that. Um, the root is always the bottom most note of the triad. The third is the middle note second from the bottom, and the fifth is the top note. Now, in some of these, I'm going to ask, I will not ask you to build it above the note, but I will, it will say use it as the fifth. And I just want to show you something here if I can. Um, if I said, for example, starting on an A, I want A to be the root of the triad. Do you remember before when I showed you about uh, intervals in the thirds on, or the fourths or the fifths or whatever. I'm going to show you about a triad now. If I said A is going to be the root of the triad, I can come up with the basic triad by just doing this. I'm just going to skip a note. I'm going to put it in thirds. So if I say A is the bottom, C will be the third, and E will be the fifth. So the root, the third, here's the root, A, the third, and the fifth. Now, when I do that, that's only a basic triad. What is going to make it either a major, minor, diminished, or augmented are the intervals in between there. But this is an easy way to come up with the correct names of the notes. You still have to put in sharps, flats, double flats, whatever it happens to be. Uh, but this is a way for you to know that at least you're on the correct note. Now, uh, let's just do a couple of these here. I'm going to try to change this color so I can see it. Okay, so if I said build a triad from the root of, uh, let's start on F here. Let's do an F, except that's not working. Here we go. Whoops. Let me erase that off. Okay, starting on an F. And I say F is the root of the triad. Okay, uh, I'm going to ask you a question, and you can, put, uh, you can put a check mark for yes and an X for no. Uh, if F is the root of the triad, A is the third of the triad. 
check for yes, X for no. If F is the root of the triad, A would be the third. Does everyone see where to put your checks there over on the right side? Yeah, there you go. Okay, very good. Okay, so yes, it is. If, uh, if F is the root of the triad, then D is the fifth of the triad. Here, let me let me uh, let me get rid of these. Oh, you can change it. That's good. All right. No, it's not, is it? Why is it not? Because you can see that those, even visually, you can tell that that's not the third. It's you know every third note. You're leaving a note in between, I guess. Uh, leaving a note in between each one of these. So if the triad is built upon the root of F, then those three notes are going to be F, A, and C. Now. Is it going to be just F, A, and C? It depends on what kind of triad I ask you. If I ask you for a major triad, F, A, and C is fine all by itself. But if I asked you for a minor triad, it would not be. It would be F, A flat, and C. Again, how are we going to find that? We're going to find that by going back to what we learned in Lesson 8 about intervals. And I'm going to show you that. Uh, okay, now I'm just going to show you what will happen. What, what about if I ask you in the, assi er, in the assignment, which some of them do, it's, it gives uh, the fifth of the triad, for example. What if E whoa, was the fifth of the triad? Can you figure it out from that? Yes, because the root is on the bottom, the third is in the middle, and the fifth is on the top or the highest note. So if E is the fifth of the triad, the third would be C, and the root would be A. So A, C, E is that triad with the fifth. Everybody understand how I'm doing that? Did it with the fifth? Okay, if I want to do it, from the third, I'm just showing you how you're going to end up with the correct basic triad from all of these. That's going to be important because I've noticed in some of the assignments that are coming in, some people aren't getting the basic triad right. Okay, if I say, I'm going to ask you a question now. If I say that uh, G is the third of a triad. the root of the triad would be D, yes or no? This D right here. You are correct. You are correct in saying that no, it's not. If G is the third, E is the root. If G is the third, B is the fifth. So do you think that's a pretty easy way to kind of come up with the basic one if you're if you're uh, not quite sure about how to how to go about getting the triad if if I if the note that's given is a fifth or a third and not the root does that make sense to you? Anyone have a question about that? Okay, now we came up with a triad built on a uh, with a given note as a uh, the root the third or the fifth the basic triad but what we're really going to do in the assignments is come up with specific triads so the first assignment 11.1 uh, the first thing it asks you to do is construct construct a major triad that's above the note now you're going to have to kind of bear with me on this because I don't have any music capabilities on this. I'm kind of drawing different things. Uh, but let's try a major triad. I want you to look at uh, some rules. The rules are in the textbook. If you go to, I believe it's uh, Unit 6. is where it's called chords uh, on Unit 6. And all these rules are in there. A major triad from the root to the third is a major third. From the third to the fifth is a minor third. Therefore, from the root 
to the fifth is a perfect fifth. That is really important that you're going to know that uh, formula. Are you expected to memorize the formula? No. Or how many half steps? No. Because remember on page 129 in the text, you can look that up if you need to. And, you know, I need to sometimes, so that's not, would not be unusual. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to give a note. Uh, we're going to build a major triad. And the note that, uh, let's see, I'm going to do one that is, uh, let's see here if I can do it. F sharp. These might not be quite straight, but you get the idea. Okay, so the root of the triad is F sharp. That is the bottom note. If you remember, now from the root to the third in a major triad is a major third. If you go and look uh, on the list, you'll find out that a major third is four half steps. I'm not going to go over. I have a, a keyboard on here. Uh, I'm not going to go to it, but if you have the keyboard handy, you know, while you're doing the assignments, that would be helpful to you. Okay, so we're on F sharp. Uh, I need a major third. So I need four half steps. From F sharp to G is a half step. G to G sharp is a half step. G sharp to A is a half step. And A to A sharp is a half step. So A sharp is the fourth half step. You can see that these triads are always going to be line, 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 or space, space, space. Like I said, this is not optimal here for doing this, but since I don't have any way to notate the music, I'm kind of making do with this. Okay, so we have F sharp and A sharp. Does everybody agree that that is? Hi, Vinko, I see you that you're there. Uh, F sharp to A sharp is a major third. For a major triad, from the third to the fifth is a minor third. So I'm starting. I, I can all, I can go ahead and put this note in here if I want because I know it's going to be. Uh, those look really crooked, don't they? Uh, I know it's going to be that space note because the triad's going to be space, 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 or line, 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 going straight upward. Uh, so I know it has to be some kind of a C. I'm starting on A sharp, and I need a minor third from the third to the fifth. And a minor third is actually three half steps. So from A sharp, to B is one half step, B to C is one half step, and C to C sharp is one half step for a total of three half steps. So how do I make it a major triad? I have to make that into a C sharp. Well, I could use some lessons on this. Okay. It kind of looks like first grade work, but you get the idea. So building the major triad with F sharp as the root from F sharp to A sharp is the major third and from A sharp to C sharp is the minor third. Anyone have any questions on that? If you have a mic you can ask me. I don't think that many people are using mics. Maybe Tim. Tim C is. Does that make sense to everybody? Check mark if it makes sense. Anyone have a question about that? I'm going to do one more for a major really quick, quickly. And just for uh, lack of, I don't want to, make any of those terrible looking drawings. I'm going to start as uh, the root of this one will be F natural. So that is an F natural. 
uh, F natural, I want to go up to the third or a major third. F to F sharp is one half step. F sharp to G is one half step. G to G sharp is one half step. And G sharp to A is the fourth half step. And then from the A or the third up to the fifth, I need a minor third. And from A to regular C or C natural is the minor third. So a major triad built upon F natural is F, A, and C. Now, there are certain things that can happen uh, with the major triad. I'm going to bring up a slide here if I can find the right one. That's not the one I'm looking for. Okay, if I had a major triad, if I built that one, say that one that's FAC, and I want to turn a major triad into a minor triad, then I'm going to lower the third of the major triad a half step to produce a minor triad. That might be helpful to you at some time. It might save you some steps. I would still always check the half steps if needed. I'm going to show you this. If you have a minor triad and you want to turn it into a major triad, you do exactly the opposite. You raise the third of the minor triad by a half step to produce the major triad. So back here uh, where we had, I'm going to show you this, where we had, whoa, that's not what I want. Some of you are probably really chuckling at this. I'm good at making a fool of myself, so that's okay. All right, F, we had F, A, and C. There's the major triad. If I take a major triad and I want to make it a minor triad, then I am going to lower the third by a half step. That third is an A right here, that A. So if I lower the A by a half step, then it's going to be A flat. So I changed it. If I have, now that's the minor triad, so if I have the S A flat C and it's a minor triad and I want to change it to a major triad, then I'm going to raise it. So A flat raised up a half step becomes a and that changed it back to a major tri uh, back to a major triad. Okay, anybody have any questions about those? It's really all a matter of why the less of the intervals. That's why lesson eight was so important. You really have to be aware of those half steps and be able to count those. Use the keyboard. It makes it a lot easier. Uh, the problem with this Wimba is that if I have writing, if I've written on the whiteboard here, and then I go over to my keyboard slide, for example, I have it there, but when I come back, then everything's erased off of there, so that's why I'm not showing you on the keyboard. But you remember how to do half steps on the on the keyboard. Okay, uh, so we actually did a major triad and a minor triad, I think. Did we do the minor triad? No, I guess we didn't. But I showed you that. So let me just, let's just, let's do one here real quick, like. Uh, starting on, uh, let's let's start with a C, I guess. We're going to use C that's below the staff here. Uh, middle C. Okay. Starting with C, I need to, if I'm going to construct a minor triad from the root of C, then I need a minor third from the root to the third. Now, I'm not going to count this out right now, but a minor third, if you look it up on your chart, if you don't remember it, a minor third is three half steps. And from C to E flat, and you might not be able to see this flat too well, but it's kind of there. Uh, C to E flat is the minor third. and now I need from the third to the fifth, I need a major third. So 
from, and that's four half steps. So from E flat to G is a major third. There's my minor triad. C, E flat, G. Everybody with me there? So we did major triad, minor triad. So all you have to know is like the major third, four half steps, and the minor third, three half steps to construct that major triad. Uh, okay. The next thing that you're asked to do on 11.1 .1 is construct a diminished triad. Diminished triad is just as easy as we just did the major and the minor. Actually, it's a little easier because you don't have to deal with two different intervals. You only have to deal with one interval, which is actually a minor third. So for a diminished triad from the root to the third uh, is a I didn't put that there. It's supposed to be a minor third. And from the third to the fifth is a minor third. I guess it would help if I put that in there. Let me just try to insert it a little bit there. Yeah, a minor third for each one of those. Minor details. Okay. Uh, root to the third is a minor third, and the third to the fifth is a minor third. So the root to the fifth becomes a diminished fifth. Now, any time that I'm doing this diminished or augmented, I still have to have a basic triad. I have to have that. Uh, if I don't have that, then it's not going to be a triad. Okay. I'm going to try one here, and let's see. I would like to start uh, the root of a diminished triad uh, on D flat. So let me get the D flat there, which I know that's the root. All right. Just looking at that, I could go back to that line of the musical alphabet, and I could uh, skip a letter in between and come up with it like that but if I look at it I see that the D is a space note the very next space note up is an F and the very next space note up is a C so I know it has to be some kind of an F as the third and some kind of a C as the fifth from D flat to the third, the root to the third has to be a minor third. So from uh, from the D flat going upward, D flat to D is one half step. D to the very next note, E flat. I'm naming these in flats because that's the way I started out. E flat is two half steps. E flat to E is three half steps. And I have an F here, so what's the problem there? From D flat to E is three half steps. Oops, I can't name it as E. So how am I going to name that F. I have to name the F, as, as the E, as some kind of an F. So I'm going to name it as F flat. That's how that's going to work. Does everybody see how I came up with that? Okay. So from the F flat, I know I've got to go up to the A some way or other. It's got to be named as an A. From F flat, I also need another minor third. So from F flat to G is one half step. From G to A flat is another half step for a total of two. G to uh, A flat. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, I messed myself up here. From F 
flat to G is one half step. From G to A flat is one half step. And from A flat to A is another half step. Uh, so that is three half steps. And I messed something up again here. Let me figure out what I'm doing wrong. I did something crazy, which is not unusual for me. Starting on D flat, the F flat. Okay, that's what I did. I counted wrong from F flat. Okay, so I'm going to do this again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, William. I missed a half step there. You are correct. Thank you, Diana. You guys keep me straight here. Okay, so... From F flat to F is a half step. F to G flat is a half step. And G flat to G is the third half step. Oops, again, it's G. How am I going to name this A as a G? All right, excuse me, I said it backwards. How am I going to name, yeah, how am I going to name the note G as some kind of an A. Well, this is where the double flat thing comes in. Uh, G, the inharmonic name for another inharmonic name for G is A double flat. So it has to be A double flat there. It's not a very good way to put it, but I kind of ran out of room. Did I confuse everybody? Yeah, okay, thanks William. Uh, A double flat. So the diminished triad is D flat, F flat, A double flat. I hope I didn't confuse you too much there. A lot of times when you have this flat as the root here, there's a kind of a rule there that I put in some of the uh, on one of those assignments is uh, some of these almost always require a double flat or double sharp. So you have to be really careful on like the diminished and augmented ones. Uh, let's try one more really quick. Maybe I can do it here. Let's try one more diminished. Let's start a diminished on uh, F natural. So F natural, I'm going to need the same type of thing here. I know that this is going to be my triad, F, A, and C, and I have to name the notes that. F natural to F sharp is one half step. F sharp to G is two half steps. And G to G sharp, I could name it that way, but I'm going to say it's an A flat. G sharp and A flat and harmonically. So uh, F to A flat is the minor third. Now I have to go another minor third from the third to the fifth. So A flat to A to B flat to B is three half steps. There's another oops. I said it's B. Well, I can't name it as B. I have to name it as a C. So how do I name B as a C? Anybody want to answer that? I watch you on the chat if you want to do that. I'm going to name the C as a B in harmonic. In harmonic. What did you say? Who was that? Flat, I think. Right. Absolutely. Uh, B, named as a C and harmonically, is C flat. So F, A flat, C flat is the diminished triad. Okay. Uh, augmented triad. Anybody have a question over diminished? Diana said flat. I'm looking at what there. Yeah. Yeah, C flat. Right. The same thing as B. Okay, an augmented triad uh, is exactly opposite of what we just did. From the root to the third is a major 
third and remember that I didn't do this right. I'm not going to put it in there, take the time to do it. But it's a major third, and the third to the fifth is another major third. So the root to the fifth then becomes an augmented fifth. There's the rule. I'm sorry. I, I, I did put it on here. Majority of diminished triads above flat notes will, requ will require double flats. And augmented chords above a sharp note require a double sharp. So that's normally what happens. There might be some exceptions to that, but it kind of gives you the idea of why they're going to be uh, double flats or double sharps. Okay, so augmented, I need a major third and another major third. Let's see. Uh, Let's start with an E flat. Let's see how that works. So E flat is the root. And on all of these that where you're constructing them in the um, assignments, I put them as giving the root and then you just construct it above that. Okay, there's the E flat. Okay, so I need Again, I could go back to that line of notes, and I could see that it goes E, skip F, G, skip A, B. But really, all I have to do, if I, you know, you might want to get some uh, staff paper. There are uh, some websites where you can print out staff paper for free. If I see that I'm doing the A flat, um, excuse me, the E flat there as the root and it's a line note, then I know my triad has to be line, line, line. So it has to be E flat, some kind of G, some kind of B. Now I'm dealing with a major third, and a major third is four half steps. From E flat to F is one half step. F to, I'm going to call it F sharp is a half step. F sharp to G is a half step. And G to G sharp is a half step. Is that correct? Did I do that right? I think I didn't actually, did I? No, I didn't. How did I mess it up? Okay, so William, tell me what I did wrong on that one. E flat to E, one half step. E to F, one half step. F to F sharp, one half step. F sharp to G. There's the fourth one. So I don't need anything. From E flat to G is the major third there. So I don't have to do anything to that one. Then from G, I need a major third from G upward. G to G sharp, G sharp to A, A to A sharp, A sharp to B. Do I need to do anything else to this one? Yes, no? Did I count it correct? Somebody check me. I think you're good on that one. Okay, good. I'm getting better then. A lot of times what I do, and it, 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 this Wimba thing is, it's good and it's bad, but a lot of times what I do, if I were sitting, sitting here and I was trying to come up with these chords, I would do it right on the keyboard. I would count, I would put my hand on the keyboard and I would count it really easily. And I do have uh, a piano behind me, but unfortunately, uh, when I use the um, microphone, it makes this huge echo, and when I use the headset, then you can't hear the piano. So uh, sometimes it's good to hear these, too, because you'll hear the intervals. Okay, so this is augmented. E flat, G, B is an augmented tri triad on E flat. Uh, anybody want me to do another one augmented? Don't ask me for one that's in your assignment. Ha ha. Going once, going twice. Everybody good? You can all, you can always put up if you have a question. You know you can text me in the text box. You can put your hand up. I'm trying to watch for hands. I'm trying to watch the text. Uh, you know, so if you don't have the microphone, you can get my attention. Someone pointed out the first time I was ignoring them. I forgot who that was. So I'm trying to do better about that. Okay, so I'm not going to do another augmented. You need a, from the root to the third, a major third, and from the third to the fifth, another 
major third. Again, those rules are in the text, and I think I tried to put them in the lesson or in the assignment there, but they're all listed in there, probably in that uh, unit six. Okay, here's another thing. We, I showed you uh, the rule or the formula there. If you had a major triad and you wanted to make it to a minor or a minor to major, uh, what we did as far as lowering or raising the third. If you had a minor triad and you wanted to make a diminished triad out of it, all you would have to do would be to lower the fifth, the half step, and that would produce a diminished triad. So if I had C, E flat, G, which is a minor triad, and I wanted to make a diminished triad out of it, I would have C, E flat, G flat, and that would make it into diminished. An augmented triad, if I had a major triad and I raised the fifth by a half step, it would make it an augmented triad. So if I had a major triad, I'm going to use C key of C major since there's no sharps and flats. If I had C, E, and G as a major triad and I raised the fifth to G sharp, then it would become an augmented triad. I'm going to uh, kill the mic for one moment. having a coughing attack, so I don't want to kill your ears with that. So I may be turning off the mic a couple of times so I can cough. Okay. Uh, we built major triad, minor triad, diminished triad, and augmented triad. Now, one of the assignments, which is I can't think what number it is. It's actually 11.6, I believe, is the inverting, inverting the triads. I'm going to come back after I go through all this, and I'm going to try to do a couple of examples where I put not the the uh, starting note not as the root, and I'll do a couple of those, but I'm just going to try to get through this a little quicker than last time. Inversions. When the root of the triad is the lowest, is in the lowest position or on the bottom there, it's said to be in root position. If any other tone is in the lowest position, it's said to be inverted. If the third of the triad is in the lowest position, it is in first inversion. If the fifth of the triad is in the lowest position, it is in second inversion. This is one of those things when you verbalize it, it sounds a lot more complicated than it is just to do it. Uh, okay, I'm going to show it to you, and I believe that uh, it will be easier when I show it to you here. Uh, I'm going to start, this is in the key of, B flat major. So in the key signature, you already have uh, the B flat and the E flat. That means I don't really have to put it over here, but remember that it is assumed once it's in the key signature. Okay, so I'm going to uh, start, have a triad or build a triad on E flat, G, and B flat. Here's the E flat. Well, let me do it a little bit differently here. I'm going to start it over just a little bit so I don't run into that. Okay, so here's the E-flat. Everybody get why it's E-flat? It's because e, the E-flat is already in the key signature, so I'm not going to bother putting it uh, the flat by it. I don't need to. Okay, so there's E-flat, and here is G, and here is B flat, and it's not ideal to run into the meter signature. 
Uh, by the way, I talked about last time, C stands for common time, which is 4-4 time. So if you see that somewhere, you will know that C is 4-4 time, meter. Okay, so E flat, G, B flat. Now that rule sounds complicated. It's not. Whenever the root of the triad is on the bottom, it is said to be in root position. So this is a triad. You can see it's a triad there because it's line, line, line. It's, it's the uh, consecutive line notes, E flat, G, B flat. So that's in root position. When I <clears throat> take the root of the triad, which is E flat, and I place it on the top. Now it is the top or the highest note. I had to I went to the very next E if you if you look here, you know, or E flat, excuse me. Here's this is E flat, F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E flat. So there's the other <coughs> the other E flat that's there. That's why I put it up whoops. I put it up there on the uh, that space. So it doesn't matter now if it's a space note or not. I'm going to get it back on there. Well, okay. Eventually I'll get it on there. Okay, so there's the E flat. The E flat went from the bottom note now to the top note. There it is. The other two notes are going to remain the same. The G is still here and the B flat is still here. That is first inversion of the triad. One way you can tell if it's first or second inversion is the bottom interval. <clears throat> if the bottom interval right here is the third then it's first inversion it's another way to tell by look just by tell by looking at it okay so there's first whoa <laughs> first inversion I'll put it back on there and now I got a different thing there all right okay now I'm going to take the bottom most note which is the G and I'm going to put the G as the highest note or the topmost note, and the G is right here. So I moved uh, a moment. I moved that G up to the top position right here. And I'm going to leave the B flat and I'm going to leave the E flat. <clears throat> so now that is second inversion. Root position, second, uh, first inversion and second inversion. If you look uh, at Put another color here. If you look at the bottom interval right there, that is the interval of a fourth, and that means that it's in uh, the triad is in second inversion. So root position, first inversion, and second inversion. Anybody have a question on how to change those around? I'm just going to do one more really easily. It, like I said, just doing it, if you do it, especially if you just do it on staff paper, it's pretty easy. I'm going to do one. Uh, I'm going to start on uh, an F, A, C triad. Okay, F, that's in root position. You see that it's space, space, space. I'm going to take the F, the root note, and I'm moving it up here to the top note. Then I'm leaving the A and I'm leaving the C. It's not lined up very well, but it is A, C, F. So it started out from 
from the bottom to the top, FAC, and now it's ACF. That is first inversion. And then I'm going to take the A, which is on the bottom, and I'm going to place it. It has to have a ledger line there. I'm going to place it on the top. And then I'm going to leave the C and the F where they were. That is second inversion. A, excuse me, C, F, and A. So we went from F, A, C to A, C, F on the top to C, F, A. Root position triad, first inversion, and second inversion. Anybody have a question on that? I have one that I prepared a slide here. It looks a little bit better. <clears throat> this is uh, starting on C as the root triad. C, C, whoops, I don't want to do it that way. C and E flat and G as the member of the triad. So I took the C and I moved it to the top, left E flat and G the same. I took the E flat and moved it to the top, left the other two the same. And then if I keep going one more time, I'm going to end up back in root position. I want to show you that. So root position, first inversion, second inversion, and then if you just kept going infin infinite number of times. So the root can move up or down. Yeah, it's not called the root anymore, but of the original triad, yes, it is the root. And it does move up or down. Uh, it, it is moving. It's the position in, in the triad is moving. I mean, it's still the root, but yes, it's going to be, it can be in the middle or it can be the top. You can tell uh, as you look at it visually, you know, the first in the root position, you see that line, line, line note. And then you see the differences as, as they are, as they are uh, going from first inversion to second inversion, where the thirds are, the line, line notes and the space face. So if you go root position, first inversion, second inversion, and move it one more time, you end up back in root position with C, E flat, and G again. <clears throat> Everybody get what Tim Baxter was asking me? The root, root can move up and down. It does move. That's what you're doing. You're inverting it. You're taking that chord, or I'm calling it a chord. It's a triad. You're taking the triad, and you're inverting it. You know, you can invert anything you know you can take your sock and you can invert it so you're going to move you're going to move the toe of it back up to where the top of it was or whatever you know how in, what inverting means so that's that's while you're inverting the triad anybody question that uh could move any could move any of the notes well you can't really because they have see to be in to be in first inversion now they have to be in this position you see what i mean uh let me Let's see if I can explain here. If I if uh, if I took uh, for example, if I took this first inversion, and let's say I wanted to do something to it, like move. If I wanted to move the E flat, I mean, where can I move it? I can only move it up to the top, and if I move it up to the top, then it becomes second inversion. Is that what you're asking me, Tim? I'm not sure. Move the fifth instead of the first. Uh, you mean if I if I if I started inverting the fifth degree of it? I'm not sure exactly what you mean. Let's see. If you're saying you're saying uh, like, okay, here's the fifth of the triad. Uh, I can't, well, I could invert it down, you know, I could take the, I could take the fifth of it and move it, uh, you know, somewhere down here to the bottom, 
but it's still going to be, even if I do that, it's still going to be that the E is going to be on the top. And when the E is on the top and the C is here and the G is here, it's still second inversion. Does that make sense to you? I mean, there's only, there's only two ways that you can really invert it. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Very good. Okay. Uh, so we inverted triads to first inversion and second version. A couple of people tried to put third inversion on a triad. You can't do that. There is no third inversion. But on a seventh chord, there is a third inversion. Uh, we, we're calling it chord now because it's four tones. It's four different tones. So it's co the combination of a triad and another note. Uh, and that other note, which is on the top, is the interval of a seventh above the root. The only types of chord, seventh chords I ask you to do are major seventh chords and major minor seventh chords, which are also called dominant seventh chords. In a major seventh chord, the quality of the triad is major, and the quality of the seventh is major. So you have a major triad, and from the root of the major triad up to the topmost note, which is the fourth tone of it, is going to be a major seventh. In a major minor, the quality of the triad is still major. That's where some people have been getting messed up on the assignment. The quality of the seventh, which is from the root up to the seventh, is a minor seventh. That's where some people are getting kind of goofed up. So I'm going to just quickly show you uh, about that. Let's see. I'm going to do it in C major just for the simplicity of, of it. Uh, okay, so we said um, back here, I'm going to do a major seventh chord. I need a major triad and a major seventh. Okay, so my major triad, I happen to know. I could figure it all out, but I happen to know it. Whoops, there we go. Is C, E, and G. That's the major triad. Now what I need to do is from the root up to some other note up here, I don't know what it's going to be yet, is going to be a major seventh. Now, I can use that, when I say that line, uh, you know what I mean when I say that line of, of uh, note names that I, I like to use sometimes? I could put that all out there, and I could start on a C, and I could tell what the uh, seventh interval or the interval of the seventh, what note that's going to be. But I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to uh, tell you that from... Uh, from one note to the next, a major seventh is 11 half steps. Now, you can do it ho however you want. I'm not going to count here because I'm kind of running over time. I'm getting kind of tight on time here. But from, I will tell you that from C, this bottom C, up to a B natural is a major seventh. So the major seventh chord is C, E, G, B natural, C, E, G, B. Do you see how that's stacked up as line, 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 line? That's, that's it. Major triad right here. This is the major triad. And there's the, seven, the major seventh above it. Everybody with me there? So that is the... Uh, major seventh chord, major triad, major seventh. Okay, now I'm going to do a major minor seventh chord, which is also called a dominant seventh chord, and it has to do with what degree of the scale it's built upon. Uh, again, I'm just going to do it in uh, C major. So here I'm going to use C as the root. So here is, uh, it still is a major triad, Whoa, that's not what I want. C, E, G. There's the major triad. Now I need a minor seventh 
from the sea somewhere up there. And I know that a minor seventh is 10 half steps. If I didn't have that memorized, I would look on page 129 and I would figure it out and then I would count it all. So from C to B flat is a minor seventh. Whoops, let me get the flat in there. It would not, I mean, it's a, a major minor seventh chord. If I didn't put the flat in there, it would not be that. C, E, G, B flat, major minor, or called the dominant seventh. Everybody with me on that? Anybody have a question on those? It's a little difficult, you know, you got to count, if you got to count 11 half steps or 10 half steps, you know, you can do what I was doing before and mess up. But if you look at it, especially if you use some uh, staff paper, you can see line, 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 and that's what it's got to be to be that chord. Uh, I'm going to show you about the inversions on that. I'm not going to try to do it here. But uh, a seventh chord inversion ha does have a third inversion because it has those four different tones. So here's uh, a seventh chord here, uh, which root is D, the third is F sharp, the fifth is A, and the um, seventh is C sharp. That's a major seventh chord. D, F sharp, A, C sharp. Why am I saying F sharp there, by the way? You have to be really careful about this thing over here, and you have to always watch the key signature because it you do not have to put the uh, accidental or the sharp flat signs over in the chords anymore once you have it in the uh, key signature. Okay, so D, F sharp, A, C sharp. Look what happens. I'm going to take the D and I'm going to put the D on top. There it is. The other three notes remain the same. They're not changing. There they are, there they are, there they are. Okay, then I'm taking the bottom most note out of the first inversion. That note is F sharp. I'm putting it on the top. Now my notes are A, I'm going to show you here, A, C sharp, D, F sharp. Then I'm going to take the bottom note again. And I'm going to put it on the top, which is the A. And there it is up there. The A is now up there. So now my notes are C sharp, D, F sharp, A. So that gave me, I uh, started at root position, the D major seventh chord. First inversion, second inversion, third inversion. If I inverted it one more time, I would come back to root position. Everybody see that? Okay, any questions? Uh, on a couple of these assignments, go ahead and ask or text it if you need to. I'm just going to talk for a second here. On some of them, uh, it says uh, construct a major triad given the note given as a uh, third instead instead of a as the root or whatever. You can still remember how to do that. If I give you... Uh, I say construct a major triad with B as the third degree. Okay, so there's the B. I'm saying that's the third degree, or uh, excuse me, the third of the triad. If it's the third, then the root has to be here and the fifth has to be there. I kind of got on C, but it's D, so G, B, D. If I say... Uh, construct a minor triad with F as the fifth, then D will be the third, and B will be the root. Inversions are used, uh, Tim Baxter's asking me what are inversions used for. It's when you are, um, <clears throat> when you are writing music or when you are playing music, you don't use it and you don't always play in root position. There's different reasons. 
uh, a movement of a baseline or something like that. You don't you don't always just uh, like if I'm playing piano, for example, and I've got a triad C E G. I don't always want to play it with the C on the bottom, uh, but I do I do still want to use it as a C major triad. So it changes the sound uh, when you are uh, composing. Uh, you want to take instead of you're having three those three tones, you're going to double one of those tones, and you might not want the C if it was a C E G. You might not want the C on the bottom. You might want the G sounding. So it's just it's just a way of mixing up the notes. It gives a different sound. Uh, uh, I don't know if that answers your question or not, but if you heard if you heard like a if you if I played something and I used everything in root position, it would sound terrible. I, well, I shouldn't say it sounds terrible because there are songs that have been used like uh, power chord rock, and that's kind of what they do when they do those chords and they're all in root position. They kind of sound like that. I don't know if that answers you or not, but you just never do everything all in root position. It's, it's change, You're changing it all around. You're changing the positions of the notes. Uh, okay, anybody have questions about anything? Anything specific you want to ask me on uh, assignment, uh, the 11 assignments? Ask now, forever hold your peace. Nobody? I think some of you already started doing these and you're doing probably the people that are already are signed on tonight are doing fine with those. As usual, it's probably the people that aren't doing so well that don't sign on, unfortunately, story of my life. Uh, okay, I'm glad that you signed on and listened. I hope if you're having any trouble, I hope it clarifies. No questions. Last chance. Okay, if anybody needs to ask, uh, anything after I stop archiving, uh, you're welcome to do that. I'll stay on for a couple minutes. Thanks for participating. I appreciate your patience with me, and I uh, hope you have a really good evening. Thanks.